Let's talk about uh, Democrats' reaction to Joe Biden uh, and the special counsel report yesterday and the press conference last night. What is uh, what is the impact of yesterday on the Biden presidency? Well, I think um, what I'm hearing is there is an acknowledgement that this special counsel went outside the lines. There was no need for him to bring in uh, some of the things he put in the report. Frankly, trying to say that the reason a jury wouldn't convict him is because he's elderly and didn't mean to do it or whatever is, is silly. A jury wouldn't convict him because he cooperated and immediately wanted to give over the documents, wanted to give them everything, and never tried to mislead them, never tried to hide the documents, never did the stuff that the guy with the orange face down at the golf club did with the documents that he took. It was not, they weren't taken on purpose. I think Trump's were. That will remain to be seen if the evidence shows that. But clearly there were efforts to hide them afterwards. That wasn't the case with Biden. That's why a jury wouldn't convict him. It has nothing to do with how old he is or whether or not he has gaffes. So um, I, I think most Democrats are angry that this this special counsel did what he did, which was clearly political. Yeah, uh, Walter Isaacson, uh, your reaction to what you saw last night? Well, I do think that uh, the senator is correct, but uh, what happened in that report is it played into a narrative that a lot of people uh, worry about, which is that President Biden isn't as sharp, and uh, it's hurting his candidacy, and you see more than 60 percent of the people saying he's too old. So that narrative, like all narratives, is overblown. It's filled with some things that people have crammed into it. But like all narratives, it has an odious smell of truth to it. So what I think Biden has to do is go out and confront the narrative. He has I'd, if I were him, I'd call the CBS people and say, OK, OK, I'm going to do that Super Bowl interview and I'm going to do it live and I'm going to go to the border and I'm going to talk to people and, and I'm going to do town hall meetings and I'm just going to show how engaged I am. A lot of the criticisms are unfair, but if he's going to debunk this narrative, he's going to have to confront it. Yeah. And certainly part of the White House pushback is these are people who speak in public. These things happen. In fact, just the other day. Mm -hmm. New Speaker Mike Johnson, who's decades younger than President Biden, well, he made a similar blunder. Take a look. Well, let's make a couple of things clear here, Kristen. You know, we passed the support for Iran uh, many months ago, three months ago. Uh, immediately after I became Speaker, we sent the necessary resources there. The speaker there confusing countries' names. It happens. I mean, I can never remember Mike Barnacle's name. Um, so, uh, Cl Claire, uh, let's. This is though, as, as noted, and we can, certainly a lot of pushback from the White House and Democrats last night, as you say, believing the special counsel went out of bounds. But this is this is a narrative that has been out there, and it, it predates this report. That they're pulling backs it up. There was a devastating NBC poll just a few days ago, saying a lot that the vast majority of Americans. Uh, don't believe that President Biden is up for the job anymore. They think he is too old and not mentally fit. So what would your recommendations be? How do they change this narrative? We know Trump makes blunders, too, but at least to this point, and maybe it's changing, the blunders don't stick to him as much. Um, what do you think the President Biden's team can do? Well, confusing Nancy Pelosi with Nikki Haley is pretty darn bad. Um, they couldn't have two people further apart um, in terms of who they are and what they represent. So I, I listen, I think this is going to be a binary choice. I think the country knows, and, and I hope, I'm more worried about the third party candidates, frankly, than I am anything else. But as long as it's a binary choice between what Donald Trump represents to this country and to women and to freedom and to our democracy versus Joe Biden. I'm comfortable with that. I agree with Walter that he's got to get out there and he's got to get out there and they, the, the staff has to be less worried about his gaffes and more worried about his him showing his enthusiasm, his passion, his emotions. And I thought last night on balance, you know, you could tell he was angry. You could tell that that was real. It was authentic. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, he was really angry about the notion that somehow he would forget probably the worst thing that had ever happened to him in his life. And that was the death of his yeah. very young son who had such promise and who he put so much faith in, in terms of his future in leading this country. As Peter mentioned, uh, Peter Alexander mentioned, the report made clear 
distinctions between a potential case against Biden and the pending case against Donald Trump. Her wrote that unlike the evidence involving Mr. Biden, the allegations set forth in the indictment of Mr. Trump, if proven, would present serious aggregate aggravating facts. Her continues, quote, most notably, after being given multiple chances to return classified documents and avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, but he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about well, it. Well, uh, Jill, thank God for small favors. Uh, we had special counsel who, uh, instead of trying to be a neurologist who graduated from Trump University, actually laid out the facts uh, and how they were so radically different in Joe Biden's case and Donald Trump's case. Uh, but the question is, will anybody notice today, given his extraneous remarks? Good point. It was a report that should have led to a headline that said, no indictment, no facts support the evidence to indict him. And it has long been the policy of the Department of Justice not to indict unless there are aggravating facts. And her went so far beyond the lines and so deliberately, it was Comey Redux. There's no question that what he said was improper. But I want to go a little further. Not only was what he said not relevant to a decision to indict or not indict, evidence is why you indict or don't indict. It is standard procedure to say we decline to indict because there's a lack of evidence. And then to put the knife in and twist it to create mm -hmm. a political narrative also yep. is Merrick Garland's fault because he had the right to edit the document and to say, this has nothing to do with my decision. First of all, D uh, Biden will not testify. And so his credibility before a jury is not relevant. So if he's not going to testify, we don't need to look at that. We need to look at what the prosecution can prove on its own. And you've said there isn't evidence. And all of the things that we might have are easily refuted. And we can't, we cannot refute those claims. So I think yeah. it was really wrong on both people's part. Her had a political motive to do it. I don't know why Merrick Garland let him do it. It, it is it is really surprising uh, the way this has been handled from the very beginning. Dave Ehrenberg, you're a prosecutor. Maybe you can explain to us, is there has something changed in the law for prosecutors over the past five, six, seven years? It used to be you'd either indict or not indict. But what we saw with James Comey on July the 5th, 2016, was a guy who couldn't indict Hillary Clinton legally. So we held a press conference trashing, uh, I, I'm sorry, le yeah, legally. So we held a press conference trashing her politically. So didn't indict her legally, but he did indict her politically. And now we have the same thing with her yesterday, who admitted, hey, hey it's, this is not indictable. These are not indictable offenses. Uh, so he can't indict him legally. So he trashes him politically. It, it, talk about talk about crossing the lines. Wait, 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 what, what was your take as a as an active prosecutor in what you read yesterday, Joe? What I thought that this was such a political gift to candidate Donald Trump that he may have to list it as an in kind campaign contribution. Robert Hur's appointment as special counsel is another example of Merrick Garland's determination to appear apolitical. Merrick Garland is a former judge, and the worst thing you can say about a judge is that the judge is biased or political, and that's why he kept on a Republican Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in David Weiss to investigate Hunter Biden. That's why he appointed a Republican Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Robert Hur to investigate President Biden. And uh, Jill's right. He, Merrick Garland could have edited this report. He didn't have to put all this extraneous stuff out there. How different is this than Bill Barr, who refused to show the public the Mueller report and then issued that three-page memo that essentially doctored the report, that misinterpreted, misled the public? You know, this whole thing should have been relatively easy. This was a similar investigation as with Mike Pence. There was full cooperation. There was no obstruction. The only reason the feds found out about these documents was that Joe Biden told them about it. 
Instead, her took over a year, then issued a 388-page report, including these gratuitous shots at President Biden. And Joe, as you mentioned, it's a sloppy report. Summary on page four, page one says that there was willful retention and disclosure, but then on page 215, it says there's a so shortage weird. of evidence on these points, right? Which is it? And, and you know, the question to me is why did he do this? And I think the reason why he did this is that he was perhaps motivated to avoid David Weiss's fate. David Weiss is now hated by his own party, ridiculed as corrupt and incompetent by the MAGA world. Despite prosecuting Hunter Biden for three felony gun charges, nine counts of tax offenses. So I think that's why Robert Hurd did this. He is out combing Comey. It's Comey 2.0, and it doesn't look really good.